Yesterday, the Lord spoke to me and said to, take, to say what to speak today. And he wanted me to say to us today, which is what I'm going to be speaking from this morning, that he wants his people to get back to childlike trust. And that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. Back to childlike trust. And what was so funny was um, all night I kept hearing this song, Always, by Javante Patton. And this morning I came in and I had my device ready to, to play that song. And that was the song God used Sister Winetta to sing this morning. Father, I trust you always. And I just shook my head. I said, I, I, I'm so sure that this is what he wants me to share this morning. I'm so positive that if nobody get nothing from it, which I know you is, I'm going to leave here with so much peace because I know exactly what he told me to say. So this word is going to change your life this morning. It's going to change your, it's going to speak to you so profoundly. It, it had me, it literally changed my life because I don't know about you, but I've, I've had trust issues in the past. Have anybody had trust issues in your past? People breaking your heart and you don't know how to trust. And then God starts saying, trust me. And you're like, I don't, I don't know what that word means. I don't know what that word means because every time I try that before, I got hurt. And I can tell you today that I'm going to walk you through some scriptures that's going to show us that the happiest people, the most joyful folks that you ever go see is the people who learn the principle of childlike trust. So, before I pray, I just want to read you the scripture. Because the presence of the Lord is so thick in this place. I'm going to read the scripture, pray. So I'm going to have you stand with me in his presence. Because I want to just do this while the spirit of the Lord is here. Because I know you've heard the scripture, but I want to... Now you understand what he wants to speak to us. This scripture is going to make a lot of sense to you. Isaiah 26... Verse 3. Now I'm going to give you a lot of scripture today. So I hope you have a pen and paper because you're going to need to meditate on all this. But let me give you the theme scripture that has been ringing in my heart when he told me what to say yesterday. It says, thou will keep him in not some peace. Perfect. Y'all know what perfect means? You can't get no better. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Now watch this. Whose mind is stayed on him. Now why is his mind stayed on him? This is the secret. Because he what? Because he trusts in him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for what you're doing already in our hearts. And we thank you for what you're about to speak into our spirit. Lord, help us to come back to childlike trust. Father, speak to us. Help me to articulate exactly how you gave it to me yesterday. And Lord, and I pray that nobody will leave here no more trusting in nothing else but you. We give your name, glory, praise, and the honor. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Let's give God a hand, praise, and you may take this seat. We Let's bless the Lord for... Sister Juanetta and her amazing team. Oh. You. you all, you all carry such. Oh. I want to Buffalo, New York. We are so honored to have you guys because I. <laughs> Every time they minister, God shows 
It's not like they had missed every. So we are honored that y'all took time to come and bless us. Thank you so much for being the gift you are and the mentor you are. Um, we just honor God for you. I honor God for our, our amazing Bishop Sanders. Let's give him a hand. I know he's probably watching. Bishop, we love you so much. You and First Lady Anitris, we want to wave to you because I know y'all will be watching this probably later on or probably right now. We love you so much. I don't t take it for granted that you uh, would allow me to cover for such a dynamic preacher. Uh, so I do count that a privilege and the honor. And um, I just want to thank God like, for my amazing, beautiful wife. My gift from God. Hallelujah. Shabba, shabba, shabba. I had to get a quick praise. In. And my beautiful daughter, Dara. Oh, I see her. She started kicking in the. She started moving in the. But I thank God for her. I thank God uh, for Pastor Marshall, Deacon Brandon. Thank God for the amazing musicians. Let's give them. Minister Collins, our, our, our amazing sister, the judge. Y'all are awesome. We thank God for you guys so much. So, All right, y'all. I, I hope y'all ready to hear this. I hope y'all ready to hear this because um, I'm, I promise you I'm not speaking on my own accord. This is clear from God, so I'm, I'm going to say it and get out the way. Um, and, but I, he, he spoke to me and said, tell my people to come back to a childlike trust. And so I was asking him, I said, well, you know, he didn't just say just come back to a trust. He just said, he says a childlike. Yeah. And the first thing that came to mind when he was showing me this was um, every morning I, I have the privilege of uh, taking my daughter to the park with me. And I put her in the stroller and we do a couple of miles around the lake. And the funny thing I love about it is every time I take her out the car and put her in the stroller and we begin to walk, I have the stroller in the way where it faces me so she could see me. And what was so funny was, you know, I take her down, before I go to the lake, I take her down um, some of the hills and through trees and all this stuff and she's hearing all these birds and sometimes dogs be barking and stuff. And she just be sitting there smiling. And I'm like, somebody tell me why is she so peaceful? Trust, trust, trust. She trusts me. Now, I don't know based on her age if I would have turned the seat the other way. If she would be as peaceful. So the thing that brings the peace is that she see her father pushing her. That's where the peace comes. So the reason why, um, thank you, Brother Collins. I'll, uh, thank you for the music. I, I'll go ahead and speak now. The reason why a lot of us worry and is stressed because we don't know who's pushing our stroller. If you really knew God was maneuvering your life, would you really be that anxious? So it sounds something like this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding. Watch this. In all your ways, if you acknowledge him, he will push your stroller. <laughs> He'll direct your path. She don't have to direct the path when we get to the park. I'm doing all the directing. All she has to do is rest in the Lord. And she's in perfect peace because she knows who's pushing this thing. And I'm saying to myself, I know that sounds good, but why is that so hard for us to do? So I do this every time I go speak. I have to do it again, and I probably did it years ago when I spoke here. But I'm going to ask everybody to stand for one second. Just, just stand for one second. All right, just stand. And I, I'm just going to just ask you to do something with me real quick, because this is the only way you're going to understand what it looks like. So on the count of three, we're going to sit down as fast as we can. One, two, three. Move. Now, that is what trust looks like. 
Not one person in this room, Winetta, look at the chair and say, are you going to hold me? There was such a quick, instant trust. And you sat down not worried about, is this thing going to hold me? Is this thing going to break? You trust in that bench so much that you didn't even stick your hand out to see if it was there. You just did like this. Boom. And then when it come to God, we go like this. God said, sit down. Okay, Lord, I'm just checking to make sure it's there. God said, sit down. Okay, all right, Lord, here we go. But Lord, what did it break? And God said, sit down. <laughs> That's all right. And you, now, now you're, you're, you, you ain't even comfortable. You at the edge of the... Look, look how uncomfortable I look. I'm, God said, would you just sit down? <laughs> but, but Lord, I just want to make sure. And by the... Now watch this. And by the time we finally get to the point, Mother Sanders, where we trust the Lord, and we finally sit down and rest in our situation, God calls us home. It took 30 years for us to finally sit down, but our expiration date came. <laughs> so most of us is going through our whole life not trusting God, anxious and worried, and then at the end of our life when God is ready to take us home, now we want to say, and God says, but you could have been enjoying peace. Those 30 years, those 50 years, you could have been having perfect peace. So, watch this. Let me give you some examples of this thing. Then we're going to go through some scripture to kind of show you the benefits of trusting in the Lord. Y'all want to know some of the benefits that come? So, let's just look at this guy that you guys know about by the name of the prophet Elijah. God speaks to him and says, I want you to go to this brook. And I have commanded a raven to feed you. <laughs> Based on what the scripture says, the man gets up and goes to this brook. But I don't, let's listen to what God said. I've commanded a raven. They're not built to feed people. Y'all do know that. <laughs> so if, if Elijah trusted in the raven... Do y'all think he would have ever went to that brook? So guess who Elijah had to put his trust in? So when Elijah gets to the brook, he wasn't putting his trust in the raven. He was putting his trust in the one who was going to use the raven. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Our problem is we keep God tell us, trust me. And then when God sends the blessing, we look at the person who's coming with the blessing. Oh, I can't receive that because I don't, I don't. And God says, what do I mean? It's me behind that person. <laughs> so when you trust God, you don't trust the individual that's coming. You trust the person who's sending them. That's why we're missing blessings. <laughs> do you know some of my greatest blessings came from people that if, if they would have just walked up to me, I would be like, I don't want it from them. But God says, well, that's the problem. I use people to bless you. I use ravens to take care of you. Yeah. And when the raven comes, if you're not careful, and if you start trusting in the raven, you will never experience the peace of God. <laughs> this is about the, I think that was just a salad. Y'all ready for the dinner? Okay, so let's get to the, some good stuff. Let's get to some Bible stuff. Let me show you uh, a couple of good benefits that come with this thing. Go with me to Jeremiah 17. This thing messed me up. Many people probably even know this was in there, but it's in here. But I just need you to see something because I don't even think we realize the benefits of trusting in the Lord with this childlike faith. God is so big on trusting the Lord. There are so many scriptures on trusting in God, trusting in God. But Jeremiah 17 is the one that blew my mind the most because uh, raise your hand here if you want to really be happy. Actually, if you want to be happy, shout. So everybody on this world, everybody in this world want to be happy. The problem is we ain't trusting. And the scripture says, blessed is the man. Y'all know what blessed me? It means happy. Look at Jeremiah 17 in verse 7. Actually, let me take you to verse 5. Thus saith the Lord. So this is God speaking. He says, cursed. 
be the man that trusted in man. So if you are putting your trust in the people, in the ravens, he says you go feel cursed. Because they should not be trusted because they don't have the full potential to make you have peace. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> now watch this. It says in verse 5, so, so curse be the man that trusts the man and make it flesh his arm. And whose heart departed from the Lord. Now look at verse 6. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good comes. So the person who trusts in man, when blessings come, you can't see it. Help us, Lord. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabit it. All right, this is where we got to get excited. Verse 7. Blessed or happy is the man that trusted in the Lord. Whose hope the Lord is. Now look at the benefits of verse 8. Yeah. So what we're going to do every time we see these benefits, we're going to take a second and just praise God for these benefits that come with these childlike trusts. Now watch this. The first benefit, it says in verse 8, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and spread it out her roots by the river. And watch this. And shall not see when he comes. You know what just read? When he come, you ain't going to see it. You're so planted, all this hell is going on around you. And you're just sitting up there like, let me see what's on channel three. <laughs> is there a channel three? Oh, help us. Oh. <laughs> I it was channel two. <laughs> I'm making up channel. You'll be here with your peace, just in your peaceful room. All this hell going on outside. You just, wow, look at, oh, wow, look at that dress. On oh, QVC shopping? <laughs> Help us, Lord. <laughs> and, and all this craziness is going on outside, Mother Grimes. And we are just sitting there. Wow, God, you feel so, I just feel so much peace in this house. That's benefit number one. Meaning, you are going to be planted as a tree. You're going to be like a tree planted. Meaning, your roots are so deep in him. That you're like, you're at peace. All this all this marching that's going on, all this killing, these mass shootings going on, and we have to pray for the stuff, but why is it that you still have peace? Just last year, we had one of the craziest mass uh, massacres right down the street at Tops. And everybody said, I ain't never going to shopping no more. Raise your hand. <laughs> if you went shopping recently. Boy, that's, that shifted really quickly, huh? Now, you went shopping uh, because something in you knows that his angels are encamped around about you. better say that. Amen. Amen. It, it doesn't mean I'm going to stay in my house and just, oh, I'm afraid to go outside. He says, when you trust in the Lord, guess what? You're like a tree planted. You already know. Listen, God is with me. Amen. Amen. So that's benefit number one. Now, watch this. It says, but her leaf shall be green. And shall not be anxious in the year of drought. So let me, it says be careful, but that means be anxious. It says, so when everybody is going through a recession. Come on now. When everybody's income is getting low. Come on, come you ain't getting anxious. You pretty much like, if my job fires me. Uh-oh. Y'all heard that? Because... He's the one pushing the stroller. Amen. This is maybe too deep for y'all. Because I know sometimes we like, we, we want to be in our mess. We want to sit back and, well, look at the, the, the government, the government did this to me. And God is like, oh, so your trust is in the government. Ah, that's why you can't sleep. He says, you are from another kingdom. I provide for my people. <laughs> he says, I will take care. But he says, it's only the happy. You're only happy when you have childlike trust. You cannot get this kind of peace if you are trusting in your jobs. If you are trusting in your stuff. He says, I promise you, you will never experience perfect peace in Isaiah chapter 26. Amen. It won't happen. Amen. Amen. I can tell you from experience. It won't happen. I tried it, y'all. I put trust in, well, if I do this, then this is going to make this happen. And then that will fall apart. Yeah, yeah. Every time. 
And then, you know, and, and especially people do it with relationships all the time. You know, well, you know, if I'm going, I'm going to make this person love me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a show them that I'm the best mate. I'm a, I'm a show them that they, they, and I'm a, I'm a take them and wine them and dine them and you trusting in your ability, right? And that person, after you did all that stuff, that person still dumped you because you put your trust in your ability. And then you start saying things like, and you get to the point where you say, you know, Laura, I, I don't even trust. I don't know who's real out here. Right, right. So watch this. So God. I'm going to trust you that you direct me to the right person. See, some people don't want to pray that kind of prayer. <laughs> there's, uh, I have, I, I, you know, there's a couple of people that know me who know that uh, I got to the point where I got so sick and tired uh, since the window that I'm trying myself. You know, oh, maybe this person's a good catch. Well, what about her? And, what, and you, get, you keep getting your feelings broken. So one day I got to the point I said, God, you... Send me to the right person that's good for me. I trust you. And then I get a call to go to Dominican Republic. And when I go to Dominican Republic, I meet my beautiful wife. So trusting in the Lord led me there. The stroller led me there because the trust was in him, not in her. This may be too much. And he's trying to direct your stroller, but the problem is, you keep telling him, no, don't, don't turn that way. <laughs> there is some stuff. There is some stuff that if we just go back to child life, my daughter has never said, dad, 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 can I please eat today? <laughs> she never did that. And the girl eat. One, two, three, four, five, six times a day. Jesus, help us. And a late night. <laughs> so she's eating more because she's not asking. She's eating more because of her trust. <laughs> the girl don't even have to go shopping. She don't have, she has never said to me and my wife, Mommy, I want to wear these shoes. Can you buy me these shoes? She never did that. And her closet right now is so full of stuff that was donated. She got more clothes. We don't even wear. She can't even, she don't even have the capacity to wear all the things that was given to her. All because she's in childlike trust. She just wake up. She don't know what food we about to put in her mouth. Now Matthew 6 makes sense. Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat. What you shall drink. What clothes you shall put on. He says, trust me for your heavenly father, the person you should be trusting, is going to take care of all of that. And then he says, listen, because y'all trust is so messed up, look at the birds. He says, because y'all y'all have trust issues so bad, look at the birds. And the birds wake up every day. And I see birds around the house just eating. They all fat. <laughs> they ain't working nine to five. <laughs> and they are fat. And we working three jobs and broke. Starving. Punching people, <laughs> honking the horn, cursing people out at the red light, and they come to church. I'm like, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> because we don't know how to trust. I got to the place, definitely, definitely when in the dating world, I got to the place where I got tired. I'm just being honest. So if, if you in here single, I'm just going to tell you the easiest way, just go to prayer and say, God, I trust you to, to move my stroller to the right way. Because I'm telling you, you're going to go nuts going online talking about, let me see about this person. And then you go to, you meet them at dinner, and then they, you know, they pull off their wig and say, huh? Are you, oh, oh. you have long hair in the, in the picture. <laughs> they, put the, they take the wig and put it on the table. Um, I think I want a steak. I think I want some lobster. You look at him like, what is that thing doing on your plate? Put that thing on. And then 
it, it already, you're like, no, uh-uh, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> this ain't gonna work, Jesus. <laughs> and then we get mad at God. Come on, come on, come on now. We didn't even pray about it. We went five months in it and didn't even acknowledge the one we're supposed to trust. And then when we get our heart broken, Pastor Sanders, pray for me. Uh-huh. <laughs> he broke my heart. Well, who broke? Pastor don't even know about the prayer. Well, who broke your heart? Somebody I met on uh, Craigslist. And, uh, wait, where do you meet these people at now? I don't know. <laughs> I bet. I bet. <laughs> yeah, if you meet them on Craigslist, something wrong. Uh, but. So I met this person at something something single.com. And on their profile said this was great. And you watch this. And you trusted right. yeah. what you read. To the point that you went to dinner with them. That's how much you trusted. Right, right. And God will be telling you, don't do it. Right. And we be still walking. No, if I wear these shoes, I know they go like me. And we do all this stuff to try to trust in our ability, and that's why we get our hearts hurt. And God is trying to bring us to childlike trust, because when we're in childlike trust, it preserves us from a lot of stuff that we are going through that we don't have to. Right, right. I got, I'm just telling y'all the truth. I, got, I, used to, I was depressed for three years back in the 90s. I went through so much stuff because I was putting trust in the wrong things. And my heart kept getting broken and broken. And to the point that I just didn't want to trust anybody. Anybody that came in my life to be a blessing, I, they made me afraid. I, I wasn't ready to receive a relationship. I wasn't ready to do nothing because I had so many trust issues. Wow. So God had to get me to the place where he, he had to let me understand, listen, if, I, if you know that I'm pushing your stroller, you will be taken care of. Right, right. I don't care if you see a lot of trees around you. I promise you, you can still rest in the Lord. And I had to start doing that, y'all. And I'm telling you, I have never seen. Oh, my God. There has been some blessings that came in my life. I'm just telling y'all the truth. There were some blessings that came in my life. That when I was trying to get those blessings in my own ability, I couldn't sleep. I was so miserable. I was so frustrated. I was literally trying to use all my money to get things. And guess what? I didn't have enough and I was stressed, worried. And the moment I got so burnt out and said, I can't do this, God says, okay, now I can push your stroller. (laughs) And when he started pushing the stroller, things that I was trying to save up for 10 years to get, I was getting in a day. How did that happen? It's because I stopped trusting in my resources And I put my trust in the person who's pushing the stroller. And the person who's pushing the stroller will bless you way above what you'd imagine. There's a scripture in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 that says, The blessings of the Lord make it the rich. And addeth no sorrow. (laughs) So when it comes from the Lord, you ain't getting no sorrow with it. So y'all ready to go to, go to a couple of scriptures and then we go praise them and get out of here? Yeah, because so, I know everybody ready to go trust them now. Yeah. Y'all like, go, yeah, push my stroller, Jesus. I mean. <laughs> all right, so, <laughs> all right, so let, let's, let's finish verse 8. Look at it. It says, so he says, and he shall not be anxious in the year of drought. So why everybody else is suffering with recession and things like that? He said, you ain't going to be worried. He says, neither shall you stop yielding fruit. That means you're going to still be fruitful when everything else is dry. Now, let me tell you, we're about to go through a few. Let's go to right now, um, Proverbs chapter uh, uh, 112 in verse 7. Let me just show you that this is so many scriptures in here that talks about trust. I'm going to give you this and I'm going to get out your way because I know that God is about to do something. So Proverbs um, 112 verse 7 says, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in who? So you ain't going to be afraid, guys, if God is our trust. All right, let's go to another scripture. Let me bring you now to Proverbs 29, verse 25. Proverbs uh, 20, I'm sorry, Proverbs 28, verse 25. 
Please write these scriptures down because you're going to need them. So it says um, in verse uh, 25 of Proverbs 28, it says, He that is of a proud heart stirred up strife, but he that put in his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. Do y'all see that? So it says, if your heart is proud, you ain't going to let him push your stroller. <laughs> proud people, don't be touching my stroller, Jesus. I don't like where you're taking me. I know what I need. And he's like, okay. I ain't going to force. And we sit in there miserable, ain't going nowhere. Imagine my daughter, I'm trying to push her at the park, and my daughter, stop pushing me, daddy. And I stop pushing her in the middle of the park. What do y'all think will happen? She's going to be stuck in the park looking up at trees. Is anybody here stuck looking up at trees? Just wondering. Just, I've just wondered. <laughs> you see the same tree? Why nothing changing in my life? Isn't it more into life than these trees? Okay, um, I know there's more to life than just looking at this tree. Well, that's all you're seeing because you told the person who's pushing your stroller to stop. I can hear, I can feel the spirit pouring into your heart. Some of y'all are sitting there saying, Wow. Yeah. I didn't even realize I've been dancing and shouting, but I never laid back in my stroller. I've been going to church for 30 years and never laid back. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. Because I need to show you this. Because this right here is something that I think, and, and, and I'm going to share this because I, mean, I can go into all the theological background of, of, of this chapter and everything, but I just want to show you a principle because it's, it's a lot in this, but I just want to show you something that is very evident right here. For Look at verse 9. It says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Now watch this, verse 10. For he... That has entered into his rest. <laughs> he has also ceased from his own works as God did. Do y'all know what he just said? So he connected this to what happened when God created the, the, uh, the, the creation. On six days he worked and on seven days he rested. Right. Because the six days the work was done. Right. Now watch this. So he is saying here that there remaining a rest. Meaning there is a principle that means that when God is, if you enter God's rest... You shouldn't be working. Amen. If you're working, you ain't resting. So resting here means get in your stroller and say nothing. That means I don't have to push my own stroller no more. <laughs> I can sit back now because I'm in his rest. This may be too. I, I hope I'm not speaking over y'all here. Because some of us, our problem is you keep thinking your righteousness is going to change it. You don't have none. Your righteousness comes from him. So you still got to rest in. <laughs> you don't have your own. Stop it. <laughs> I'm righteous because I, I, I look like this. Stop it. That ain't it. Your righteousness in Christ Jesus is what makes you righteous. So you got to rest even in that. Your holiness is not in you. It's in him. So please, you're killing yourself. I'm not going to eat this on this day because I don't want to displease the Lord. And Jesus came on earth. He was like, I'm going to show you what it looked like. Jesus comes on earth with all these, with, well, they had all these things, uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees, all these things. that they were. And Jesus came on earth with his disciples. They started picking corn on the Sabbath. And them people was like, y'all ain't supposed to be doing that. Why y'all doing this on the Sabbath? And Jesus was kind of like, um, because Jesus understood the resting. When you resting, you can eat stuff. Come on now. <laughs> when you righteous, you oh, I can't eat that. I, I'm going to get, I'm a, the sin is going to get into my body if I eat this corn. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, when you enter his rest, Sit in a stroller, 
Get your bottle in your mouth and do what? Shut And drink the bottle that's provided. <laughs> so by the time I walk her around the park a couple of times, this girl is so rested. She's got her eyes open. She's looking and she keeps, she keeps seeing her daddy pushing the stroller. She keeps seeing her daddy pushing the stroller. And every time without fail, y'all, by the time I'm on the mile number two, Sister Milton, that same girl who's outside around other people, other dangers, all this noise, the same little girl, it's like this. Her head is always to the left. Somebody tell me, how is it possible to sleep that deep out there? <laughs> but before she can get to that place of rest, there had to be a strong revelation of who's pushing my stroller. And that is why many of us are not going to sleep. Because the enemy has blinded our eyes to who is really behind your life. The scripture says in Romans 8, 28, all things is working for your good. I know you don't believe it. I know you don't think this path is working for your good, but you got to trust the person who's pushing the situation. Don't trust the situation because the situation going to keep you up at night. Trust that God is walking you through this thing. There were moments, I prompt, there were moments that I used to be so, God, what are you doing? Can y'all imagine what Joseph was feeling like in prison? What are you doing? Do you know what that man was feeling like when he was in, in, in um, the pit? What are you doing? Do you know what he was feeling like when he was a slave? And then when he gets to his place of rulership, he gets the revelation that says, y'all meant it for evil, but the person who was pushing my stroller, listen, that's our problem. So the man finally get the revelation. It was you. It was you all this time. It hurt it, but it was you. That's the only way. I got more scriptures, but you know, I sense the Lord saying they're getting this. So let me, let me, I'm going to bring it, I'm going to bring it here. I'm going to wind it down here. Go to Psalms, uh, Psalms chapter 37. I'm going I'm to end it here. Psalms 37. Uh-oh, y'all getting excited. Y'all, y'all, heard, y'all heard Psalms 37? Oh, he was preaching from that? Yeah. Oh, praise God. Amen. I didn't know that. Praise God. Now watch this. Let's read verse 3 to verse 7. Uh-oh. Verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good, and thou shalt dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Right. Verse 4, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. The, 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 and if you really want to understand the word delight, delight means just sit in your stroller and look at your daddy push. Just, so my daughter just be smiling at me. She just be smiling at me while I be pushing. She's delighting in me. And because she's smiling, I want to give her the desires of her heart. I want to give her even more milk, even though I know she's burping and, and spitting up. I want to give her more because she's just... <laughs> now watch this. Verse 5, commit thy way unto the Lord. Yeah. Look at that word again. Trust also in him. Because he keeps saying, all this stuff we're talking about is connected to your trust. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Verse 6, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the new day. And let's bring it home here. Verse 7, rest yeah. in the Lord, and wait patiently for him, because of him who prospered in his way. Be, uh, you know, be not, fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. So when he says, rest in the Lord, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. go to sleep. Look at your neighbor and say, go to sleep tonight. Go to sleep tonight. I am. I am. I am. I don't know about you. And uh, Minister Collins, if you want to uh, minister, you can let the Lord use you over there. I, I, it's, and it's funny, I, thank you guys for being here. Um, I don't know if you guys want to sing that Javante song a little bit because I, before you go, because I know you have to leave. But I just want us all for a minute 
because I don't want us to leave here hearing what the, the, the importance of trusting and we forget. We leave here and then put our trust back in all of our family members. We honor and respect them, but do, he says, you're cursed if you trust in people. Come on now. People don't have the ability, guys. I've learned the hard way. So trust the people God is sending. Right. Trust the sender of the people. Right. He's the, he is the person we got to put our trust in. And I promise you, what he is saying is, he says, if my people go back to childlike faith, he says, I will give them a peace that passes all understanding. They ain't going to understand. They're going to have the kind of peace like Daniel had. In the lion's den... The man did not he in the lion's den all night, not for an hour. Yeah. He's in there all night. And I always say, I do this for my own personal imagination. I really believe he took one of those lions, Sister Winetta. And I think he patted the lion and said, lay here. And the lion laid down. I believe he used one lion for a pillow. And the other one, he took the tail and wrapped it around him. Now, the only reason why I believe that happened because when, when Daniel comes out of the lion's den, yeah. King Deer said, oh, Daniel, you, can't, you know, live forever. And Daniel said, oh, my king. Yeah. Yeah. God has sent yeah. his angels. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, yeah. for yeah. the angels. That's true. Lord, Ooh. to shut the mouth of the lions. Yeah. Now, why did God send his angels to shut the mouth of the lions? Because Daniel was in his stroller. You can only sleep in the lion's den when you know God is pushing my stroller. Please, let's stand at this time. And let's lift up our hands. Let's lift up our hands.